Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this short video I'm going to show you the color balance tool inside of GIMP. So you can find the tool in colors and then color balance right there at the top. And how this works is that whenever you apply uh, basically color balance to one of these three ranges, it's going to change the colors in part of your document to basically correct for something else. And I would imagine in this particular image when it was originally shot, the uh, artist or the photog photographer actually used color balance to get it how it originally was. So the three ranges, shadows, are mostly going to refer to things that, or areas that tend to show up on the ground, these darker areas, or in other words, where there might be a shadow. And the midtones is kind of referring to more the meat of the uh, image itself. So possibly these trees, kind of everything that's in the middle, and I would expect this guy as well would count as mid-tones for the color agents. And then highlights uh, what you see in the background. All this extra stuff that's just kind of there, that is mostly what's gonna change with highlights. So let's go ahead and demonstrate each of them. As I mentioned before, shadows on the ground, if we adjust the colors of the shadows more towards a red, as you would expect, it's gonna get more and more red up to and including a very, very red level. And that doesn't look too bad, uh, but you do need to be careful about this tool because it can drastically change how the image looks to the point where it looks unrealistic. So for instance, if I bump green up to 100, that looks completely unnatural because it's rocky. It's not a, uh, a ground where there's a lot of grass to begin with. So with midtones, uh, let's go ahead and demonstrate that. The 32 actually doesn't really include the guy that much. Uh, it is affecting part of the guy. And uh, it's not a precision tool. Because, uh, I mean, obviously there are many sub areas in your image that could be affected. But it's kind of doing its best to calculate. And I think overall it does it pretty solidly. But yeah, the red mostly targeting these trees that are in the middle ground of our image. If we bump green, it kind of looks ridiculous. So once again, be careful with it. And then the background, the highlights going up there a bit. You'll notice it also kind of targets this uh, net that he has to be ca uh, happens to be carrying a little bit as well. So we could bump the green up. But if we want it to actually look um, reasonable, then <laughs> we do need to, of course, kind of have a plan for it. So if we want to make the whole image more red, for instance, and kind of keeping it simple here, we can bump the levels of red up to maybe 11, drop the green down back to zero or negative two, and the red up to 13 again. And for instance, that might make the scene look a bit more aggressive because red is the color of aggro or aggression. So making the image look more sinister, or dark, or dangerous. Red will kind of do that to your image. But how you want to use the color balance tool is really up to you. Uh, that's just the basics of it. Choosing your ranges and then choosing which colors you want to focus on in your image. Uh, note again that you can go the other direction entirely. So it's not, is there red or no red? It's, is it really red or is it much more towards a bluish uh, bluish green or cyan in other words. So I hope you found this video useful in understanding the color balance tool. I've been Chris. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my future videos.